Many places the once sites of civilization have been lost or completely reclaimed by nature. In recent decades, many archaeologists have been able to use increasingly advanced methods to discover many breathtaking finds that have long been thought lost forever. While cities like Atlantis may be the stuff of legends, there are many real cities that have been lost to the depths, some of them forever. The existence of many of these cities is often lost to time and only discovered by accident. In fact, there have been many instances of explorers, archaeologists, or divers simply bumping into one of these hidden gems. Some cities uh, were thought to be things of myth and legend, only to be discovered and studied for years. Today we're going to look at a few of these cities and structures. Some of them are much more fact than fiction, others are still the cause of debate as to how they came to be an underwater kingdom. China's great city of Xicheng is our first city that rests underwater. As you'll find, there's a common theme of necessary sacrifices in underwater cities, where governments have to flood regions for one purpose or another. This came in 1959 for Xicheng, which was flooded during a period of industrialization for the Chinese government. This flooding was an effort to create more hydroelectricity for China's growing industrial needs. The flooding project saw the relocation of 300,000 people from this area to make it safe to flood. While the city had been inhabited for centuries, in just a short period of time, it was lost permanently at the bottom of Qiangdao Lake. The Lion City, as Xicheng is known, sits below over 30 meters of water. Explorations since it was rediscovered in 2011 have resulted in many breathtaking images of the city's front gate, decorated with statues of Chinese lions and old artwork that dates back to the 16th century. Many experts believe these sites have been somewhat preserved by the years underwater. More efforts are underway to document the city and understand parts of it that have been lost to history. As the government explores further, more and more media is becoming available from pictures to videos of diving expeditions. Recently, the site has become an attraction for divers and tourists who are interested in the archaeological significance of the city. Its architecture and artwork are all heavily sought after by divers who are looking for a photo of a world that's now long gone, yet seemingly frozen in time. No doubt we'll be hearing more from the city as the Chinese government sends in more explorers over time. The history of its monumental library and influence on geopolitics is well known across the world. The city's lighthouse, standing at over 100 meters high, is considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The city enjoyed great acclaim and is remembered as one of the greatest sites for trade and education. Its lighthouse, the Pharos of Alexander, was a marvel that many came from all around the world to see during the 1500 years that it stood. While much of the city still remains on land, large portions of the land were lost permanently to the sea. Structures, streets, and many other discoveries have all been made in recent years, showing a clear picture of just how destructive the force of a tsunami can be. As earthquakes and their resulting tsunamis are no new feature of the local geography, the engineers responsible for the city of Alexandria constructed many features to protect against them. Unfortunately, just as we've seen with modern tsunamis, even great feats of engineering are not enough to stop the destruction caused by some tsunamis. Many buildings of the ancient city are now under over several meters of water, and some parts are even deeper. This is partially due to the washing away of land as the tsunami hit, and partially due to the sediment it left behind in its wake. The tsunami that caused this destruction was documented by the Roman soldier and historian Ammianus Marcellinius as having occurred in the year 365 AD. The wave is believed to have killed thousands both in the city and its surrounding area. In a very similar way to the Sumatra tsunami of 2004 and the Tohoku tsunami of 2011, it's believed to have caused a wave of destruction on many surrounding cities at the same time. Multiple accounts confirm the timing and raw power that this catastrophe leveled on coastal cities, making Alexandria just one of the cities that lost portions of their infrastructure and populations. Today, the Egyptian government is drawing plans for an underwater museum that will explore portions of the ancient city, especially the lighthouse, and an experience that they hope will be unrivaled. Due to the heavily preserved nature of many of these underwater sites, this would be yet another way that the world of today can interact with the world of yesterday.
This red sandstone structure can be found in the Man Sakar Lake in Jaipur, India. This palace dates back to the 1700s when it's believed to have been built as a hunting lodge by Maharaja Sawe Pratap Singh. The five floored structure sits in the middle of the lake with four of its magnificent floors underwater. While it was never intended to be submerged this way, it was once again the result of a nearby dam being constructed between nearby mountains. The resulting water led to the palace losing all but its top floor to the water. From a distance, the palace can be mistaken for an optical illusion. Its light sand color is similar to the famously pink structures in the nearby city of Jaipur and stands out from the picturesque blue lake that it calls home. While it's a popular destination for tourists, it's only part of the incredibly popular cultural center of Jaipur. The surrounding area enhances the experience of witnessing this amazing piece of architecture that is likely now preserved for years to come. The Jal Mahal is a famous example of Rajput era architecture. Visitation has been halted due to both preservation efforts and safety concerns. It's safe to say that a large palace that has been partially submerged for so long is likely not the safest structure to walk around on. The ornate designs and historical significance of its builders is part of the story of the kingdoms and principalities that once ruled this area. Even with much of India changing hands due to colonial rule, this waterborne monument to past civilizations is truly a remarkable one. Over the course of history, many myths and legends have intermixed with facts and historical evidence to create narratives that lie somewhere in between. That's the case for the holy city of Dwarka. Located on the western shores of India, the city has a history that is well over 2,500 years old. The mythological history of this city is that it is the site where the Hindu deity Krishna is believed to have settled and reclaimed land. The legends surrounding Dwarka tell of a great fortified city that fell to the depths following the death of Krishna. While the exact cause of the sinking of such a large city isn't known, it's believed to have been caused by some natural disaster, much like a tsunami. If this myth is true, then evidence can be expected to be found at the bottom of the surrounding bay. While many pillars and structures have been found, many archaeologists have been hesitant to state with any certainty their age. The issue is mostly one of dating. As the structures would need to date back to the period of time that the myths are believed to have originated, substantial evidence for their age would first need to be established. This hasn't been accomplished, leaving much of the legend to remain in mythology for the time being. The ancient city was said to be around 96 square kilometers and lasted for thousands of years prior to its demise. Many archaeological findings prove that it was a place of trade that had roots established with several kingdoms. It is believed to have had great walls and temples, many of which would have resembled the temple found in the area today. All of these great structures would have been lost when Krishna died and left his mortal body. Many similar cases of myth turning out to be true have been found all over the world. Many are hopeful that they will one day prove the existence of Krishna's great city and the legend that its massive fortifications fell into the depths of the sea. But for now, there are still many beautiful structures that can be found in the area surrounding Dwarka. All that we know is that there were, in fact, great cities in this area and that many of their structures now rest at the bottom of the Arabian Sea. Imagine you've just got off the boat in ancient Rome, and all you're looking for is a good time, calm baths, and lots of good food. That's the way many Roman middle class would have felt when they left their cosmopolitan lives behind for a getaway at the Baie, one of the most popular holiday locations of its time. This city was once a major destination for tourism during the time of the Roman Empire. It was so popular that it was even considered a sort of Las Vegas for the ancient Mediterranean. While many people may consider this time in history a time when people farmed and went to war, it was also a time when many middle class citizens citizens of different nations enjoyed themselves in similar ways that we do today. For many Romans, that meant a vacation to a luxurious location like Baie. Much like at modern day resorts, you were most likely to see those of middle and upper classes there. Senators, statesmen, landowners, and generals would vacation there. The wealthiest of these even purchased or built villas near the most popular attractions that the area had to offer. The resort was not just a place of relaxation, but also one of parties, drinking, and according to some accounts, a booming sex trade. The wealthiest of the wealthy were known to frequent the resort. To give you some historical context for its popularity, many accounts place Cleopatra as having been on vacation at Baie all the way from her home in Alexandria when Julius Caesar was assassinated in Rome. Much like Rome wasn't built in a day, the fate of Baie or wasn't decided in one either. Over the years, it suffered from a number of different problems. Towards the end of the Roman Empire, it was raided many times by different groups throughout the 8th century, and as a result, it was abandoned as a tourist destination. This was long after the fall of the Roman Empire, and it was the final straw that left the town mostly empty. In a great bit of irony, the very volcanic activity that made it into one of the most popular hot bath locations in the empire would also contribute to its demise. Years of volcanic activity, including earthquakes, caused the city to sink 
into the sea over time. To date, many portions of the city remain underwater and are under threat of being consumed by aquatic life. Many statues and structures are slowly being eaten away by the many algae that live in the area, making preservation an urgent matter for the many researchers who are trying to keep these valuable pieces of history alive. You can find the underwater ruins of much of the city still near the modern city of Naples. It still stands beneath the sea, reminding people of a time when one of the largest empires in history partied like there was no tomorrow. Whether or not this structure belonged to some ancient civilization or not is a matter of mystery. This is the case for the Yonaguni Monument, a large structure that has been the cause of debates in archaeological communities. This underwater rock formation lies just off the coast of Yonaguni Island, just south of Okinawa and to the northeast of Taiwan. The formation consists of a series of shapes that appear to be descending in a terraced manner, almost as if they were carved that way. What makes this entry unique is its historical ambiguity. Most researchers seem to agree that the popularity of Yonaguni is more in the mythology surrounding it than any real evidence that it was a man-made structure. In the early years AD, there wasn't much in the way of written history from this area of the world. While many Chinese documents speak of trade with nations to the south of Japan, historians are unsure exactly what some of these references are related to. As is the case with long eras of undocumented history, there are a few areas of the region that have now become a thing of legend. Much like King Arthur's Avalon, the Kingdom of Yamatai has elements of its culture and impact that are not universally agreed upon. While most believe there was a civilization on the island at some point, many others also believe an ancient civilization isn't the only explanation for this monolithic structure that sits off the coast. The difficulty is that there is simply no proof for the existence of a settlement or a kingdom in this area. Many pseudo-archaeologists have spread stories about their theories concerning this site, but have done so in many cases with very little evidence to back up their claims. Authorities on the subject point out that for every explanation that paints Yonoguni as a remaining structure, from Yamatai, there is an equally plausible explanation for the many shapes that appear to be cut into its monolithic structure. The issue is really in that there's no solid evidence there was ever a civilization in this area to begin with. If anything, Yonaguni is a great example of how often archaeologists have to be careful of allowing the excitement of the search to cause them to make conclusions without evidence. It's a beautiful rock formation, nonetheless, one that has attracted many divers to come and make sense of its existence for themselves. Thank you.